So in philosophy, you want to go beyond the definition of a term into its philosophical analysis. Um, so if you think about um, courage, for example, um, the, the dictionary says that courage is mental or moral strength to venture, persevere and withstand danger, fear or difficulty. Okay. Um, Aristotle says a lot more about courage than this, um, because it's a virtue and he wants to f find a place for it in his general theory of virtues. He wants to explain how it contrasts with other virtues and also with its characteristic vices. So it sits between cowardice on one hand and rashness or foolhardiness on the other, uh, and so on, right? You find none of that in the dictionary. And finally, I want to say a word about grammar. You will find that philosophy lecturers are... Um, sticklers for grammar. You will also find that writing philosophy may put strain on your grammar that it hasn't felt before because you will be trying to express complex thoughts and that requires writing complex sentences and to make those sentences work you have to um, get the grammar right. So you have to you know, understand how to attach dependent clauses and all that kind of stuff. Um, and that can be a bit boring and difficult. But, as well as being useful for clarity, you should think of grammar as logic in the raw, logic in the wild, logic, logic in its raw natural form. It's not an accident that some words in logic, like predicate, for example, are also words in grammar. Um, the two things overlap. We saw Orwell arguing that um, clear writing and clear thinking go together. This is a similar sort of thought, that good logic and good grammar have got something to do with each other. Grammar allows us to refer to objects that aren't present. You know, I can say, well, uh, we, 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 had a, we had a rather shabby Christmas tree last year. You know? Uh, that Christmas tree is long since gone, I can refer to it. Um, and fiction, right? In fact, we didn't have a Christmas tree. Uh, so in fact, that was a fictional Christmas tree. We can do that using grammar. Other animals can't do this. If you think about meerkats, meerkats have various squeaks and sounds that they use to warn the rest of the meerkats about um, birds of prey and snakes. And they have to be different because if... You know, if a meerkat warns about a snake, they all climb trees. And if it warns about a bird of prey, they all run down holes. It's very important to get the right one. No meerkat can um, refer to their own perspective, talk about the past or the future, talk about things that aren't present. No meerkat can say, is it just me? Or are there really more snakes around this year than last year? Right? Meerkats can't do that. So, specific, what's distinctive of specifically human language is uh, not vocabulary, although our vocabulary is much bigger than any other animal, but it's not vocabulary, it's grammar. It's grammar that marks us out from the other animals. So, think on this. When your philosophy lecturer marks your work and pedantically corrects all your grammatical mistakes, they're not just um, covering your work with a depressing amount of red ink. They are trying to move you a little further away from the animals and a little higher towards the angels. Thank you for your kind attention and um, tune in next week.